Today we're going to take a look at how the new O4 Pro Air unit allows us to fly our FPV drones for way, way longer than before. Now, this is down to three main things. The weight saving from no action camera, the actual type of flying that we're going to be doing with this O4 Pro Air unit, and because of that, the type of battery that this now means we can use. So if you're new around here, my name is Justin, it's great to meet you, and if you've been here before, it's great to have you back. Typically on an FPV drone like this, we have our FPV camera, which gives us our goggle feed, and then we normally have a dedicated filming camera mounted on the top, and then we would power the drone using a lithium polymer battery, and that's going to give us the power that we need in order to get the performance that we want. But that has all changed with the O4 Pro Air unit. That's because the O4 Pro Air unit is using exactly the same image sensor that we had in the DJI Osmo Action 4, which means that basically this thing already is an action camera. So that means we can change a few things. You see, generally flying cinematic means flying smooth and doing things like mountain surfing or hitting a few gaps, but generally it's nowhere near as power hungry as flying something like freestyle or racing, which means that now more than ever, a battery like this starts to make sense. Now this is a lithium ion battery or Lion for short, and it's more similar to the batteries you'll find in your typical DJI drone than it is the lithium polymer LiPo batteries that were generally used to flying. Lithium ion batteries are much more energy dense than lithium polymer batteries. Now, although these two guys are a similar size, this one is a little bit bigger. This guy weighs 420 grams and this guy only weighs 220 grams. So that energy density also comes at an added weight. But for the same sort of measure, this guy is 1,300 milliamp hours, where this guy is 4,000 milliamp hours. So it's three times the capacity, but only just under double the weight. So with three times the capacity, surely that means that we can fly for three times as long, right? Well, it's not that simple. And there are a lot of factors that are gonna go into this, but to keep it simple, as you would expect, there is a trade-off. So lithium ion batteries generally have a much lower discharge rate than their lithium polymer counterparts. So if we take these two as an example, this one is a 1300 milliamp 100C pack, which basically means it can deliver 130 amps worth of current, where this guy is a 4000 milliamp hour, but it can only deliver 35 amps of current. And that's a constant current draw from both of these packs. Now, what that basically means is that when you're doing high throttle maneuvers, the lithium ion pack is not gonna be able to deliver as much current, so your drone is going to have less punch and you're also going to experience more voltage sag during really high energy maneuvers if you're using a lithium ion pack versus a lipo pack. Now this pack here actually does have a burst current rating of 70 amps so you can you know get a bit more power for in short bursts I think up to three seconds or something like that but basically it's not designed for really high energy flying. So now that we know that, if we go back to their milliamp hour ratings and the fact that we should in theory be able to fly for three times longer with this than this, how does that actually work in practice? Well, you gotta think of these two guys as kind of the hare and the tortoise. So the hare is gonna be able to run really fast for a short period of time, then it's gonna need to stop and recharge. Whereas the tortoise can go slower, but it can go slower for longer. So basically, you can fly at a much lower sort of amp rating or load on the battery with this, but you can fly for much longer because of that higher energy density. Now, if you still flew at basically a similar load on this battery, you'd run out of capacity sooner because it's obviously a lower capacity pack. So if we go back to what I said earlier about freestyle and racing, we want really high energy output, high ampage. This is the one that we want and not so much this one, but what about for cinematic flying? Surely this will be fine, right? Well, today, that's what we're going to be testing. So this is going to be the battery I'm going to be using. It's the Goldline 6S 35 amp, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And I've actually had this, I've actually got two of these and I've had these for around 18 months now. And I bought them specifically for longer distance, longer duration flying. Now, I've only used them a few times, mainly because of the fact that when I put this on a drone, and an action camera, the drone basically turns into a bus. It still flies okay, it can still cover a lot of ground and a lot of distance, but it's just not optimal. So I generally stuck to flying a LiPo battery and just having those shorter flights. Now, I think that having the action camera removed from the drone is now gonna make this guy way more feasible as an option because basically the weight difference of a GoPro or an action cam, they're about 150, 160 grams, and this is 200 grams heavier than the LiPo. So it's similar to flying a LiPo with an action camera, but instead of the action camera basically being dead weight, this is all extra battery life. So we're gonna get the drone in the sky. I'm gonna first off fly around with the LiPo battery, show you the benefits, and we're gonna mark the flight time, and then I'm gonna fly with this lithium ion battery and fly around and see what sort of performance and flight time we get out of this. Now, I've already flown these guys before, so I have a basic idea of just how much they should fly, but we're gonna see how we do today. So uh, let's get the LiPo on 
and get in the sky. Before we start to do some flying, let me quickly just cover the drone I'm actually gonna be using. This is an iFlight Nazgul Evoque V2. It's a five inch dead cat version and I upgraded it to the O4 Pro air unit. So it's a basic five inch freestyle drone. There's nothing special here. It's not a seven inch long range purpose built drone. I do have some larger 150 millimeter antennas on the back here, just so that when I'm doing different maneuvers further away, the uh, video reception should be better. But yeah, nothing special here. Let's just get it up in the air. Okay, so I've got the fully charged LiPo in the drone now ready to go. I'm going to take off and then we're just going to talk through a few things. So we're going to take off in three, two, one, and we're up. Okay, so the timer is now counting and we'll be able to see what the battery lifespan is on this lithium polymer pack. Now, first off, when we're just cruising around at a steady, what speed are we around? 50 k's an hour and we're only pulling about 9.3 amps. So we're not actually making much use out of all of the current that this battery can deliver. And when we're just flying around doing some nice gentle cinematics, if we have a quick look at the amp draw, we can see that it, it very rarely actually goes much above sort of 20 or even even anywhere near 15 or 20. And obviously this is flying in a much lighter setup than it would be if we was using that uh, lithium ion pack. But we can see here the amp draw is very low. Now something else, another reason that lithium ion packs allow us to fly to a much lower voltage than our LiPo pack is because of the minimum cell voltage. So this lithium polymer pack can basically fly down to they say around three volts per cell. Generally, I try and land at around three and a half, so 3.5, whereas a lithium ion battery will generally allow you to fly down to 2.5. Now, with my Lions, I tend to land those at around about 2.8, 2.7. We can see you can run the battery cell voltage way lower on a lithium ion than you can on a LiPo, which is just also gonna allow you to have more room on that battery for usage. So as we're flying along here, like I've said, there's very low amp draw going on and the voltage sag as we're cruising around, we're holding around 3.8 volts. Now, if I give it a bit of a punch, we drop down to 3.3 and we get way more performance. Now we can see that if I start to rip around, the amp rating goes much higher. We saw 50 there, pushing around 70. And if you really start to push this guy around, that's where you're going to feel that extra performance coming in from that LiPo pack. Woo! <laughs> almost but yeah so we'll keep flying around at a fairly normal pace here and then i'll come back to you when we're about to land and we'll see what the final time is just take a minute to have a look at just how good this o4 pro looks honestly the image coming out of here is stunning and obviously it does help that i'm by an absolutely beautiful beach like this honestly beautiful okay so i'm pretty much coming to the end of this battery now now I know generally on these packs, I try to land them at around 1100 milliamps used. That tends to give me around 3.5 volts. But in this, six, uh, in this case, I will keep flying a little bit because I'm still a little bit above 3.5, so we'll keep it going. Currently at five minutes of flight time, so we still can get decent flight time on a LiPo, but it's gonna be nowhere near as what we can get on a lithium ion pack. Okay, we're starting to get a bit lower now. I'm gonna bring it in, we're at 3.5 just over 3.5 as I'm in a gentle cruise. So I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna do a quick hand catch. Uh, we're basically just gonna see what the time is. I think the time is gonna be just short of six minutes. Okay, so there we go. We can see five minutes, 48 total flight time. 140 k's total speed. This thing needs to shut up for a minute. And our max current was 94 amps and that's 1180 milliamps used. So, Let's put the lithium ion pack now and see what the difference is. If you're enjoying this video so far, you're also going to enjoy my free weekly newsletter where I give you the latest drone news, hot tips, and a little bit of a behind the scenes look into what's going on in my life. So you get to stay up to date with all of the latest drone announcements and developments, and you also get a bit of a sneak peek to see what's going to be coming up in future videos. It's completely free to sign up. I'll send it to you every single week. You can find a link in the description to go and sign up to it. Thank you so much. And let's get back to the video. <laughs> Oh, my knees. Okay, so I've now I've got the lithium ion pack on there. Now my low voltage alarm in beta flight is set to 3.5 volts. So it is gonna be shouting low voltage for a lot of the time, but in my mind, I know I'm flying a lithium ion pack. So I'm just gonna monitor the cell voltage myself. So let's take off and see what this one's like. Okay, so we're off now with the lithium ion. And we're now gonna have a quick look. Now we've got exactly the same camera angle. So we're going for that 50K an hour cruise round about here. And we're currently pulling 12 amps where before we were pulling around nine or 10. So that extra weight is giving us a little bit higher of an amp drawer at the minute. 
but it's actually not that much. You can still see we're miles below that 35 amp hour, uh, 35 amp uh, constant current draw. So if we get a little bit more speed up, we're pulling 15 amps, 16 amps, still way below that threshold and we're doing 100 kilometers an hour. So if we start to do a little bit more spirited flying, actually before we do, let's just check what the voltage sag is. So you can see we're currently sitting around 3.7 volts in the same sort of cruise where before we were seeing uh, around 3.8. So we're a little bit lower with the voltage shag, but if we start to do some high throttle maneuvers, I don't want to push the pack too much because it is only a lithium ion pack. But if we add some current from it there, we can see there we have nowhere near as much performance. There we pulled 50 amps and I could already hear it sort of, it's run out of puff. So I'm going to keep flying around nice and steady. We'll do a little bit, uh, you can still fly a lithium ion pack fairly sprightly. As you can see here, cruise it over the trees but you do just have to be a bit more mindful of the throttle. You need to get on the power a bit sooner than you would with a LiPo. And you can still rip it around a little bit. You just have to be conscious that you have a little bit lower maximum current output. So I'm gonna carry on flying this guy around pretty much similar to how I was before. And then we'll come back in and we'll check on the voltage. Actually, before we do, let's just head up and have a quick look again at this beach area. So now we're pulling what, 35 amps, battery sag down to 3.3 but just how stunning is that coastline oh my god unbelievable i cannot believe that this is literally five minutes from where i'm staying right now amazing wow and 04 it just looks so freaking good honestly got an nd16 on today ISO 100, 120 shutter, and we're just cruising along. Something to note, we're currently at around about a similar milliamp hours used as we did with the LiPo, around 1,070. And you can see we've been flying for four minutes and 20 seconds. So we are burning milliamps at a slightly higher rate than we were with the LiPo, but again, we're doing a slightly higher average amp draw and those milliamp hours are just gonna come down because of that. Okay, we've just crossed now 10 minutes of flying and if we have a look at all of our stats 2100 milliamp hours used so we're roughly halfway through the pack just a little bit over now generally with a lithium ion pack you're not going to get down to the full milliamp hours used uh, that you see on the screen now all of this has been calibrated i calibrated all of this before so that is showing me an accurate reading but we can see here that we've been flying for 10 and a half minutes, our voltage is around 3.3, so we still have around 0.6 of a volt to go before I'm gonna be bringing it into land. But you can see here, this is just a standard five inch freestyle drone and we're already getting, we're over 10 minutes of flying now, which is absolutely crazy, perfect for cinematic stuff. Let's keep going and just see how far we can push this guy. Okay guys, we've just crossed 15 minutes now. The battery voltage has just dropped below three volts per cell. We're getting a land now warning screaming at us still. Now, from my experience, this pack tends to go down to around 3,300 milliamp hours. So I'm gonna keep flying it down a little bit. In theory, we can get this pack down to 16 volts before we land, but I'm gonna keep flying around and we're just gonna bring it in when we get to around 2.8, 2.7 volts per cell, we'll bring him in. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit closer to me now in case we have to ditch, because ditching over the water it's not gonna end well, especially over salt water. So we'll hear it beeping as it comes past for that low battery warning, but there's not much I can do about that right now. Okay, 16 minutes, we've just dropped below 2.8, so I'm gonna bring it back now, do a little hand catch, and then we're gonna check what our ending total arm time was. It's gonna be somewhere close to 17 minutes. 17 minutes, which is actually insane, just on a five inch freestyle rig. So let's, just gonna hover it around here for a little while until our voltage goes to a level where I think it's gonna be appropriate to land so we can get a little bit more. 2.76, 2.75, 2.74, 2.73. Okay, I'm gonna catch him now and bring him in. And there we go. Okay, he's back. Before we unplug it, let's have a look at the total arm time. I'm gonna to have to just put the goggle recording back on. There we go, 17 minutes and one second. The max speed, 104. Maximum current we pulled there was 51 amps and the maximum, well, the used milliamp hours, 3,555. Okay, let me just stop this and get this beeping to stop. 
It's let me be honest with you, I was not actually expecting it to fly for that long. Now, when I've flown this before, generally with an action camera, I've been getting between 12 and 13 minutes. I did actually get a, uh, a very long flight time when I first got these batteries. I flew for 15 minutes. That has been my current sort of PB or longest flight. But today we managed 17 minutes. Now we had a little bit of sprightly flying in the beginning and then we were just cruising around backwards and forwards, just draining that battery. Now, probably during a normal cinematic flight, you would expend more energy than I just did then. But 17 minutes of flight time on the bog standard basic five inch quad is ridiculous. So should you go out and buy some lithium ion packs? Well, I think that if you fly mostly cinematic, you should definitely have at least one or two of these packs in your sort of flying kits, because if you wanna do some longer range, longer duration flights, then lithium ion packs are exactly what you're gonna need. And you've just seen on a bog standard five inch 04 quad, we flew for 17 minutes, just cruising around. And most of the time, cinematic stuff, it's just cruising around. It's not requiring a whole lot of high energy maneuvers. And a lithium ion pack is more than capable of doing that for you. So lithium ion, I am definitely, definitely gonna be using these more and more in the future. So. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, chances are you're going to enjoy this video right here too. And if that one doesn't speak to you, then this one probably will. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>